Hey everyone, thank you for joining us this afternoon or this afternoon in New York City where I'm located. I'll give this a few minutes as I see lots of people are joining our webinar right now. And hey, Natalie, hello, thank you for jumping in there. So for everybody else, I would love to know who you are. Uh, so if you could share in the chat, let's pretend we're all filing into the same room. Why don't you jump in the chat, say who you are, introduce yourself. Uh, and I'd love to know what brought you here today. Why this webinar that A Small World has offered? Let us know, let, every, let, let us, I want to know, but everyone else who is participating today. Let's make this, I know this is a webinar and how I get to engage with you is with the chat, but let's pretend we're in a workshop setting. Let's make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so please share who you are and what brought you here today. Why this webinar? And uh, Loving this, uh, Sonoma, um, okay, excuse me while I just move things around here. Okay, working in France, Joy from London. Um, you have a Joy with a 50,000 word manuscript. Um, fantastic, Joy, tell us more. Um, Steve with the Sonoma International Film Festival. Um, your first draft in 2020. Uh, um, Nutella, Nutella, tell us more about um, First Draft, what kind of book? Um, um, Jasmine, you would love to write a book, fantastic. Um, always interested in hearing more about publishing. Yes, um, a small book a month in one year. Um, wow, I want to hear about that, uh, Ruben, about that challenge. Um, uh, Let's see, Aloha Tina, um, lovely to meet you. Um, um, Nate, a uh, writer aficionado, good, looking uh, for your insights and resources that you pop in as well. Um, writing romantic fantasy sci-fi novel, Live in Miami. Okay, my book is, just so everyone knows, my book, Build Your Dream Network, is nonfiction. Some of what I'm going to say will likely apply to fiction writers, but there are some differences as well. Um, legal rules. I'm not sure there's much I can share on that, but you know, if there's specific things you want to know, Joy, um, I can do what I can to, uh, you know, in, in, I would say, give you some insights there. I'm going to leave the chat open where I can see it. Um, and um, please, let's use the chat um, conversationally. Let's use the chat uh, to ask questions. If you have resources to share that you're relying on, please put them in the chat. Um, I know that you were would have um, received a link that was to my website. And to this, which is an annotated version of uh, my book proposal, there is also on that page. So when you open the link, you'd find the page, there'd be a little yellow colored square that would open to this PDF. There was also a bunch of resources on there, um, including um, more writing resources, but also everything from publishers, websites, editors, you know, manuscript wish list, all sorts of things. Uh, so um, make sure you've got that because this is forming the basis of the conversation today. And this is very um, conversation. Um, so, um, okay, so this is great. Joining because um, I love the writing, I'm sure blah, blah, blah. this is perfect. Um, okay, so, I get, love this and as people join or as you think of things again put them in the chat um, and thank you for sharing why you came today and all the rest of it 
Let me tell you a little bit about me, my background. Um, never included the idea or dream that I would write a book uh, until I did. And I will talk about how that came about. But uh, my career is started as a corporate attorney. Um, I was moving on a very linear career path. And uh, after doing a sort of the lawyer thing, management stuff, um, getting involved with um, startups and women's entrepreneurship, I finally took a big old deep breath and said, what was kind of the thread? What were the things that people came to me for? Um, what was any commonality between all these disparate pieces of my career? And once I had kind of glommed onto that, the idea of writing a book, um, it kind of possessed me is the best way I can describe it. Uh, and I really felt like I had to, you know, write this book. My story of how I got kind of worked through how I got a book, you know, I was saying a literary agent, how I figured out how to start writing a book, all of those things. I mean, they could have been a case study in my book. And they're, they're what I'm going to share with you. Um, and, and because, you know, hey, you know, people gave forward to me and this is my giving forward to other other folks. So as I mentioned before, my book is nonfiction. So this path is very much about um, being a nonfiction writer, but I will share what I've learned from my friends who are uh, writing in other genres. Um, so one more or a couple more things before we really get started. And I really hope you somehow somewhere have this in your hot little hand or on a screen so that you can go through it with me. Um, and I will be keeping an eye on the chat for your questions, but we're really gonna walk through this. But before we do, um, some, rea some reality check stuff on becoming an author. One, there's an element of putting your ego to the side. Um, and you've got to figure out what matters to you in this whole process of becoming a writer and becoming a published author and what stuff you're not going to, you know, pick fights with or what doesn't matter. Um, you will see as soon as you open the page, um, my book originally had a different title. And the first thing the publisher did was change it. Um, so figure out from the get-go before you start on this process, what part of your ego is in. Secondly, um, whether you get a publisher or you don't get a publisher, it's all the same work for the author. And it was interesting, I was listening to an interview this week with the fashion designer, Rebecca Minkoff, who's got a new book out. And it was a shock and surprise to her that she had to market her book. She's got a big publisher and she's a successful fashion designer. She probably had a lovely advance as well. So there's different reasons and different choices for which path you take. And I will talk about those, but just know for you, the author, the work's the same. So that goes back to the ego of what part of this have you got your ego in? Why does your ego want you to write a book? Um, all that kind of stuff. The third thing I want to say is if you want to write a book, you got to start writing. Um, and you'll see again, as we talk through this book proposal that, um, the writing may be, you know, finding your voice. The writing might be clarifying your voice. The writing might help you find an audience. The writing might show a publisher um, that you've got the chops to sell a book. So if you want to be an author, start writing uh, if you're not writing already. Um, and it doesn't matter if anyone's reading it, you know, right quite yet. Just start writing. Okay, so... Let's, um, let's walk through this handout. I, I hope it's pretty much self-explanatory, but if it's not, um, you know, raise your hand, type in the chat, like, hey, Kelly, can you slow down? I got a question on that part. Like I said, I've got the chat open right here. I'm watching, watching the camera, watch, watch, watching the chat. So uh, do ask questions as we go along. This 
my journey in terms of getting published, um, I sort of asked the big question, or sort of put the big goal out there that I wanted to write a book. And then the very first thing I thought to myself was, what the what? Like, where do I even get started? And where you get started with a nonfiction book, if you're seeking, well, where you get started with a nonfiction book is figuring out besides your topic, where are you gonna get it published? What's the right route? And how about putting together a book proposal either way, because it's a really good way of organizing your thoughts. So one of the very first things I did was contact someone I knew who had, or was in the process of writing her first book. And she sent me her book proposal, which is the format this one is based on. So, um, like I said, this is actually the annotated version of what I submitted to a literary agent that then got financed and submitted to publishers. And my book was ultimately published by Tarsha Paragi and imprint of Penguin Random House. Um, I chose to go with a publisher rather than self-publishing um, as I wanted the book to become the basis of sort of the next stage of my career. Uh, I had been doing a lot of public speaking and workshops before the book came out and I knew that's where I wanted to grow my career. On the advice of a friend who said, what ultimately do you wanna do with this book? He said, Kelly, I would recommend getting a publisher versus self-publishing. This doesn't necessarily hold true for anyone, you know, for everyone. One friend of mine is in the technology space. She is now three or four self-published books in she chooses the self-publishing route um, to publish her books because it is faster to get out new and novel ideas around technology and how it's shaping our lives. And this is what she's known for in her talks. And it has not held back her speaking career. So that's why she went that route of self-publishing versus the traditional publisher. I wanted the gravitas, I wanted the uh, stamp of approval. Someone asked a question earlier about the legal. Hey, I wanted a book that was gonna go through the legal department, the editing, all the rigmarole of a big publisher because frankly, it's not something I wanted to worry about on my own. So that's why I went the publishing route. So, Let's dive in. Um, the very first part of a book proposal is a summary. What's your book about? Um, you'll see I've written here, it's 700 to 1,000 words. It's something to grab the publisher's attention. When you're writing that summary, think about writing it in the way that if you were in a bookstore, uh, you know, I know all of us as part of a small world are people who love to travel. So let's pretend you're walking through an airport and there's a bookstore and you're going to pick up some reading material for your next flight. You go in and they've got new and noteworthy titles. You look at the cover, right? But then you flip to the back and you think, what's this work about and who's this author? Your summary is kind of got to be written in that capturing way um, and grabbing the attention of a publisher to say, wow, okay, this is, this is a book I want to read, i.e. this is a book proposal I want to read. So that's what you're trying to do in the summary of your book proposal. Grab their attention, um, share why this is needed, you know, give a glimpse at who the audience is and answer the question, why you're the one to write this and not do it in 15,000 words, but 700 to 1,000 words. Like, 
like I said, think of it as literally being an expanded version of the back of the book. Um, if you were, like I said, you were in a books bookseller in an airport trying to grab a title to read on your next flight, what would you, what would grab your attention and say, wow, I'm going to read, I'm going to buy this to read. That's what you're trying to do in the summary of your book proposal. And I see there is a new question in, so let me, um, okay. Oh, great question, Joy. I'm going to be coming to all of that on terms of um, marketing, because this is a real eye opener for everybody. Okay. So that's what you have to think about um, in terms of the summary of, a, of the book proposal. The next sort of sections in a book proposal you'll see are the other features. So this is where, you know, gets into Joy's question of um, what else besides a really great idea and the ability to string words together in a coherent sentence or two, what else do you need to know? Um, or what else do you need to display? Uh, and what you know, other tools do you need to convey to a, a publisher? Or as I said, if you're self-publishing or thinking about a hybrid publisher, and I can give you the distinction between those, you should be asking yourself these questions as well, okay? So let's talk about how you're gonna market a book. That's what this next section is. So this is where you explain to a publisher and clarify for yourself who your audience is or who your primary audience is. Uh, it's interesting when I was pitching my book and when it, what happened with my book, it, 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 the literary agent pitched it to publishers. My book went to auction. That meant there was multiple publishers who were bidding on it. And to make sure that that process of someone buying the book didn't drag on, it went to auction and that was forcing all the publishers to bid um, on this, like literally compete with each other on one day. And at the end of the day, we selected a publisher based on the bids uh, that were in. Um, what was really interesting is that different publishers saw a different audience. And again, that may come back to your ego in terms of, oh, all right, I can write this book more for startups or entrepreneurs, or I can write this book more for young people, um, or I can write this book more this way, or you know, it could be the factor of my book in terms of the audience, but you may get that sort of, hey, we think your audience, primary audience you know, is more this way, could you write the book? Again, thinking about your ego and where your, your sort of, you know, the things that are, you know, non-starters for you and the, and the items that you're like, okay, I can, I can write this or I can give more examples that speak to that particular audience. Um, let me just say one more thing with respect to audience. It's really important to clarify your audience and really define it. And I say that as someone whose audience for her book has continued to bleed out the edges. My book has a massive audience in the sense that everyone from students and recent graduates from universities and college read it, as do people who are well into their career in making career changes that are either voluntary or involuntary. That's wonderful, but it is, at times a headache of a marketing problem because the audience is so broad. So from my personal experience, if you can really narrowly define your audience, but also show it's a big enough audience, that would be a marketing sweet spot. And in some ways a heck of a lot easier than saying everybody needs your book. Um, so there we go on audience. Here's where we get into the question Joy asked and, and some other things. You'll see I've got the explanation here on publicity and marketing. Um, I'm going to market this book. Here's the thing. With publishers, they need to see that you've set up and you have the marketing muscle already in action versus you'll start to do these things after the book is published. And even if you are going to... Um, 
self-publish, you'd want to get your marketing apparatus up and going so that you had the relationships, the network, everything in place before you got started. Absolutely, yes. Joy, you hit the nail on the head. What I realized when I started working through this book proposal and putting my own together was there things that I had already started to do over the years. I had started to speak you know, on panels. Um, I had started to do workshops, be it related to career development or it might've related to other things I was doing. It wasn't necessarily or exclusively on this topic of networking. Uh, I had blogged on various platforms for various reasons. Um, one was because I was testing a website and their, and their offering that they had for members because I was in the process of building an alumni network and I wanted to see how this platform works. So I wasn't doing it thinking, oh, let me make me create my thought leadership. I was doing it for these other reasons. But then I saw in hindsight that, you know, creating, um, you know, so sort of creating the habit, the sharing of my thought leadership um, to actually have a body of work that if someone Googled me on the internet, it was already there to, be able to convey that I had done public speaking, um, like it actually became an asset when I looked back and could show a history of undertaking these activities um, rather than sort you know, of picking it up at the last minute. So it was easier for me to pivot, you know, some of the content that I was sharing on social or pivot some of the panels and speaking that I was doing rather than creating from whole cloth. So, um, and it does create a juggle, particularly, you know, when you're in the writing process itself, but, you know, more, more on that later. So in the publicity and marketing, you're not only showing what you have done, you're also looking at ahead and saying, here's the places that I will be pursuing. Um, here's the kind of places where I'll find my audience. Here's the kind of places where I can sell my book. Having a traditional publisher, now my book came out in 2017. So pre-COVID when we still got together in real life. My pub, so my publisher with my book, there was obviously resources of the publisher. There was a publicist assigned to my book, but they were not exclusively assigned to my book. They had a whole suite and roster of other books that they were promoting. So I also hired my own publicist who worked in tandem. What they focused on though was a lot of long lead um, media. So by that I mean magazines, um, both print and those magazines, um, website, internet properties. They focused on media interviews and they focused on uh, some podcasts and things as well. As you can convey in here and there, hopefully with you know uh, too much reading behind the lines, they were not planning a book tour. That was all on me in terms of thinking about audiences. And that's, so that's something I worked directly with my publicist on in terms of where were their book events, where were their things. Depending on the author, um, depending on the genre, um, it could be that publishers also, you know, try and find um, like, book events, like I think this week is like Houston, the Houston book event, which is a big deal. It's all virtual this year. So they may be pitching those things as well, but you can't sit back and think, oh, the publisher's taking care of it. You need to do it. And this is, you know, let me go back to again, the whether you are an author who self-publishes or gets a publisher, 
the weight of this is on your shoulders to plot out and plan. So yes, to Joy's, you need, you need to build the audience. Like you need to get that marketing muscle done first. Also, the more you do for my experience, the more, if you get a publisher, the more they do for you. Um, next part in, and if there's more questions on the marketing um, from anybody, pop them in the chat um, so I can answer them. All right, so competition, um, probably self-explanatory, uh, that part of a book proposal, like what are the other books out there? It's kind of an interesting type rope. You want to show that there are other books on this subject because then it shows it is a category that um, a publisher wants to be in. But at the same time, it's like not so many books that someone's like, oh, we're, you know, we're over food memoirs or we're over, you know, personal inspiration stories or we're, you know, like you, you, you get what I mean. It's like there needs to be a market, but not so saturated. Um, I like to, when I wrote mine, I sort of wrote it more of here's why these other books are companion books in the sense that even if someone has read some of the so-called competitor books, they'll still pick up this one for these reasons. Um, also to thinking about competition, and I learned this from my literary agent, um, you know, sometimes there's books out there and they don't sell well. You don't wanna put those ones as in here as comparables or competition because then it may be a signal to a publisher that actually this area is not a good one to be in like right so um so yes yeah, so to kind of do your work on what else is out there and why readers would regardless of what's out there that they're going to want your book as well um and thinking about what other books are out there and what other books are selling in the resources, the links that were on the, and just scroll up in the chat and you'll see the, the link that um, a small world put in to the chat. You know, there is resources in there like um, Publishers Marketplace, um, which shows what books and titles are selling. So you can see what, you know, what do publishers have an appetite for? What is it that is big on their radar, radar screen right now? Manuscript wish list is another resource that way in terms of what are people looking for as in what are hot categories and is there a way that your book or idea fits within one of those categories that people are seeking. Um, so there we go. Um, the next part of the book proposal is your author biography. Um, you know, let's go back where I started on ego. Any any hesitations for getting your brag on, you really need to put this aside. Um, this might be for some people the biggest challenge. Like you, you got to sell yourself here as why you are the one who is uniquely positioned to write this book um, to share this story, uh, and you know. You can't be shy about what you've done or accomplished. Um, they need to, you know, kind of say, besides the sort of the summary at the beginning, this is where they really need to say, yeah, this person knows their stuff. Um, others in the world may not have heard of them, but they are the expert on this, or they are the person to share this story, or this is so remarkable. Um, you know, I can't wait to get their book into the hands of people to be inspired. So you really got to let it all hang out um, and, uh, you know, not don't hold back on how fabulous you are. Um, the next is sort of the big chunk of the book. And this is where um, the book outline, this is where you will do like a detailed outline chapter by chapter with a synopsis of what is in that chapter. Now this is, a, is again, as I said, this is for a nonfiction book. And I know someone above and I could scroll through and say who it was who's writing, you know, um, uh, let's, where are we here? Writing a book, I know someone said they were writing um, 
and it was in the in the fiction, young adult, all that category. Um, so this is where my fiction and short story writing friends were like, what the heck, Kelly? A nonfiction author can pitch and get a book deal on the basis of this, a book proposal, where a fiction writer needs to submit a manuscript, like a completed manuscript. Now, the completed manuscript might get kicked around and edited and all the rest of that kind of stuff, but you gotta write before you get the book deal versus getting a book deal and then writing the book. There's a difference between fiction and nonfiction. So for a nonfiction, this is where you do that detailed outline. Here's what's gonna happen in chapter one. Here's what's gonna happen in chapter two. Here's what's gonna happen in chapter, and you do the synopsis, you know, the takeaways, um, you know, I also want to say it's like that detailed court, that detailed outline you should have done for um, papers when you're writing, you know, a thesis or a term paper in university. And I don't know about other folks. I never really did that, but I had to do it for this. Um, so that's what happens in that book outline part where you literally go chapter by chapter what the chapter's about what you know evidence or criteria or you know lessons takeaways boom next chapter you know all the rest of it so there we go let me just i see there's a couple of questions here um from mate uh if one is writing a book uh, let's see about the scope of eventually signing a movie deal um is this um You know, it's interesting, mate, some people are um, writing books, but they really want it to be a movie first. Um, um, you know, it's sort of chicken and the egg, maybe, um, you know, maybe you're writing the book and you're hoping it'll be a movie, or maybe you write a book and then it becomes a movie. Um, it, it, you know, until there's sort of, it's sort of like, I want to say the expression don't count, count your chickens until they're hatched. Perhaps if a publisher could see that, yes, there are multiple places where this book could be used. It, you know, you think of uh, books like Sex in the City that ended up being, you know, A, it was a best selling book. It became a runaway popular TV series. It's become several movies. It's now becoming another movie, and they're filming it right now in New York City. Um, unless you had like the movie, like the thing in the can when you're pitching the book, um, I don't think there's any problem of saying, hey, I could also see this being a movie or this could be a podcast series that looks like this. You know, whatever your imagination is, put it in there. There's no harm. Who knows how they're going to, you know, uh, and, and if you have particular connections that you say, I have talked to friends in the film industry who love this idea and would, you know, would want to explore purchasing the rights to this. You know, that's the kind of that's the kind of details I would want you to bring to the table in your book proposal, um, rather than just an aspiration and a hope. On just a little story, a complete aside. Yeah. I'm sure people, or hope you may be familiar with the book, The Martian, that became the Hollywood blockbuster movie, The Martian, um, with Matt Damon in the lead role. That book originally started as a free downloadable PDF on the website of the author. And the person who wrote it never imagined anyone would want to read this, you know, science fiction story. He just wanted to write the story. It actually, it actually sold first as like the rights to do it as a movie. Then the book sold. In the meantime, the PDF had to come down off the internet, obviously. Um, and it, I understand it's like one of the best 
selling audiobooks because there was like a year long time period where the only way you could get it was audiobook <laughs> because the, the physical book hadn't been printed yet. So sometimes, you know, like which order of things might be, you know, who knows, but if you've got particular um, connections or conversations you've had around your idea um, that have said, oh, someone wants to use it for this, or, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm imagining that this book could be a TV series, and I've had conversations like I would put that in here in terms of, um, you know, your your um, what you think in terms of the marketing um, and all the rest of it. Um, so there. Um, for short, I use a plot among twelve stories already for twelve mini books. That's amazing, Ruben. That's fantastic. This past. Let me see this past week, like in yesterday, I interviewed best-selling author, Helen Ellis. Helen is now written three books in five years. She wrote her first fiction, her novel, um, more than 15 years ago. And then there was a 15 minute, 15 year, sorry, not a 15 minute, a 15 year gap because two other books that she wrote, no publishers wanted. Um, and now she's got a book deal to produce more books because um, her book, um, American Housewife, a book of short stories sold so well. Uh, so some of this is, you know, you, you got to write the stories um, and hey, there's, there's where they go. If you're, you know, a short story writer um, or that's the genre you're going, this is also where I, I think you'll see, I put in the resources writing contests and things like that. Um, so, you know, think about making those kind of submissions because you never know. Um, you know, writer Elizabeth Strout used to, best-selling author, used to submit to The New Yorker. Uh, her, everything she submitted to The New Yorker was pretty much rejected but she would get these notes back from the editor saying, you've got talent, uh, you've got um, obviously a skill. This is not a short story. This should be a longer story. You should flesh out these characters. Uh, and lo and behold, when she submitted the manuscript for her first book to Penguin Random House, the editor who had been rejecting her for years at the New Yorker was at Penguin Random House and was the author who bought her first book. So, you, you know, there's the other thing in all of this process. You never know when people are gonna end up and what could happen. Um, next part of all this with the proposal, uh, specifications, the schedule, how long is your book gonna be? How many words uh, do you propose to have? Graphics, visuals, like, is, or is it just gonna be text? Um, my book has visuals. I think visually, um, that was the one part of my book I had my ego in. Uh, I wanted the visuals. I wanted a certain, at least a certain number. The amazing thing is I got more in there that I wanted to, uh, or I had specified in the contract with the publisher. And it was the one piece I think I would have said I was most particular over fighting over. Because um, it mattered to me, that part, they could change the title, they could do other things, but I was like, I gotta have those visuals in there. So, uh, and, and the timeline to write, like how long you think the book and how long it will take you, like I will deliver a manuscript in 12 months, I'll deliver a manuscript in whatever time period. Um, on that, I will note, and this is where, I want to go back to where I said at the beginning, the sort of the ego, um, uh, you know, whether you take a publisher or not, you have to do the same amount of work and start writing. Um, when my book sold, and I can talk through that timeline, when my book sold, I had four and a half months to deliver a manuscript. Yep, four and a half months. Uh, so, you know, some of this where I say start writing, there's a real reason to do that. You need to understand, you know, 
where you need to be, what are the conditions, what's the time of day, um, you know, get in that habit of exercising that muscle because if you get a book deal and they say, well, all right, we want the book in four and a half months, you know, you just got to get writing and make it happen. So there we go. Um, next part of the book proposal you'll see is writing samples. Um, as I know here, unlike novelists and short story writers, um, you know, we don't have to, when you're a nonfiction writer, you don't have to submit a completed manuscript, uh, but you need to show people that you can write. So this is a blog. This could be articles you've written. This could be um, publications you've written for. Uh, so if you're not doing that now, like set yourself up for success by starting to do that. So back to get writing if you're not writing. The rest of this book proposal, as I flip through the pages, is really kind of getting you to think through um, um, and um, yeah, get you to think through all like these pieces, like use the rest of this because it is a worksheet, the rest of this um, handout is to really get you thinking about what it is that you need to start working on. Where are you falling short in that if you were going to go to a, the traditional publishing route, where you may reach roadblocks um, to achieving that dream of getting a publisher. Um, so, you know, the things to think about to refine your story, um, um, the things to, to think about, all right, I've got a list here of social sites. Do you have to use all of them? No, but maybe you're gonna say my audience is this type of person. That is why I'm focusing my social media on Pinterest because I saw someone before, they're an architect. Um, there is a vast audience on Pinterest who are into interior design and architecture. Therefore, the best place for me to be is where there is visual search. And this is where, why I'm building up my Pinterest. You know, now that Instagram has moved to um, video, it makes more sense for me to double down on my Pinterest, um, you know, metrics versus these other platforms. Like, you don't have to use all of these things, but you know, explaining how and why you are using the ones that are relevant for your audience. Um, Joy, that's, thank you for asking that question again. Does the audience size matter? Yes, and, yes, and, uh, yes and no, uh, yes, they want to know that you're doing these things. No, I've never heard a publisher say there was a specific number. I think it's more important of showing a consistency and an understanding and an ongoing activity versus saying you have X number of followers. What was interesting to Joy and to everybody else is somebody else um, uh, like an uh, aspiring author said to me, well, they were told they needed to have at least 20,000 Instagram followers. And my reaction was, who told you that? And they said, oh, well, I heard it from, and I'm like, yeah, you heard it from a digital marketing and PR agency who wants you to hire them to get your follower count up. You're not hearing that from a publisher or a literary agent who sells books. So when you hear you have to have a certain like follower count, look at the source of the information. Is it someone trying to sell you a service or someone who actually knows? And the actually know in my mind would be a literary agent or a publisher, an editor, someone like that pure and simple. Um, so um, I think more importantly, like I said, knowing which social sites your audience is on and 
building up your activity to connect with the relevant communities who are likely to buy your book and connecting with them in advance on the platform in the networking room, as I say in my book, in the networking room where they are, right? Like you got to show that you know where they are and you're already engaging with them um, rather than, you know, trying pitching them like everybody else after the fact. So um, there's, there's my thought and hopefully Joy, that answers um, your question on terms of the, the, um, the follower count um, and all of that. Interesting, when I went to um, sell, I would say, when I went to pitch my book to literary agents, the literary agent that I ultimately went with, you know, she went through everything. It was like almost like a checklist. And that's part of the reason when a small world contacted me and said, would you do this? You know, would you do a program and what would you do a program on? Um, you know, my ability to kind of show you what I did, knowing that some of this felt like the checklist of things when I went to see a literary agent, like I had, unbeknownst to me, I had pretty much done everything that I needed to set up to be in a position and a strong position to pitch a publisher. The one thing that when my literary agent was flipping through um, the marketing and the publicity part of um, the book proposal, she had said to me, and she said to me, you have never, you've not written for a national publication. I need to see that. Uh, which was sort of interesting. So while you're thinking about blogging and thinking about writing, um, and you might have your own blog, think about sources and places where not only can you be quoted, but also where you could pitch um, editorial or a story, um, commentary, uh, maybe a, you become a columnist, whatever it may be. Think about places where you can do that because that was really sort of an interesting one for me to hear as I sat down with a literary agent. She's like, yeah, here's the one thing you don't have on here. You've been in a lot of media, but I need to see you create traditional media that way. So that was the one thing I know that I had to go and, um, I had to go and do. Uh, to make sure that I got the literary agent. I know there was a question earlier regarding legal. There's a whole lot of legal stuff with the book I never worried about uh, because I had a literary agent and a literary agency behind me. Um, you know, the way that works, a literary agent, you know, they don't get paid on, unless they sell the book. So, you know, they've got a whole lot of experience with all the legal stuff going up to getting a book deal. Uh, so I figured they're gonna make sure they get paid. So they're gonna make sure I get paid. And I know as a former lawyer, that probably sounds shockingly lazy, but with so much else going on when you're writing a book, you gotta take one piece of worry off your desk uh, and off your mind. So you can focus on the task at hand, like writing a book. Uh, so there was that. Um, The literary agents, in terms of finding them, again, manuscript wish list is a resource. Um, the, there are editors and, and um, others who are on manuscript wish list who literally say, here's the type of genres I'm seeking. Um, so, um, you know, that's a worthwhile one to check out. The other thing I would say is think about people in your own network who have written books, who may have some recommendations on literary agents, but also think about people in your network who may know literary agents because of the circles they travel in. So if you're thinking about writing a book, like it behooves you to talk about the fact that you wanna write a book um, because that's where people can agree that they might wanna make recommendations. They might wanna be an early reader and give you feedback. They might know people who could help you on that journey. So, you know, as I said, my own story of getting my book published could be a case study like the other case studies in my book, uh, but uh, it is not in there. You're getting it here. All right, let me take a pause and a sip of water. Um, this will give you guys a chance to gather some thoughts and put some questions in the chat.
I would love to hear what you're thinking, what information you're needing um, in the you know 10 or so minutes we have remaining. Um, I said I'd discuss the timeline. I started thinking about writing a book in 2014. I got, you know, so I talked to a friend about the publishing industry. I talked to a friend about whether I should self publish or um, go a traditional publisher. Um, I talked to a friend who had published, and that's how I got the book proposal template. Um, I started writing the book proposal, really getting it together and thinking it through, uh, took probably about three months. And then I started to seek out a literary agent. Um, I got a literary agent. She, when I met with a literary agent, she had gone through my proposal with a fine tooth comb. So it was almost like I wrote the, the book proposal for, to get the literary agent. The literary, literary agent had some suggestions and things I needed to do before she could pitch it to publishers. That's not always the case, but it was, it was my case. Um, I then kind of took another month to think about the things and do the things that she had suggested. I edited the um, book proposal. I sent it back to the literary agent on the basis of the timing of the year, that's where she's like, all right, here's what's going on in the publishing industry. This is when I'm going to pitch it because here's when people are like, this is what's going on in the liter you know, the publishing world right now. Like this is, you know, kind of the cycle of their summer. So we're gonna pitch it here. So I remember we pitched it towards the end of August um, and the book then sold and, and yes. And then the book sold in early September and then I had till the middle of January, so that's 2015, middle of January of 2016 to deliver the manuscript. My, my editor wanted one manuscript. She did not want progress submissions. She wanted one manuscript. Um, then started the process of editing it. Um, and you go through various editors, you know, kind of the initial edit, you know, all those kinds of things. Then there was a time period, I'm just kind of pausing. So you're kind of going through the editing and then there was like literally pens down, this is it because uh, the book goes off to print. And then there's sort of this gap and silence period because uh, not much going on. The, you know, editor doesn't need to talk to you, but that's when you're sort of thinking about your marketing, you're thinking, you know, kind of planning with respect to whether your book's in pre-sale. Um, you may or may not be recording your own audio book, all of that kind of stuff's going on, but you're literally waiting for the books to get printed. And at the time, um, back then, books were primarily printed in China. So, you know, there's, there's a gap between when books are sent to print and when they get on a cargo ship and, you know, get sent back. And then, um, but it was, it was a year from submission of manuscript to publication date, which was for the hardcover version of my book, which was in 2017, um, uh, January 6, 2017, or January 3rd. Uh, so anyway, so it was like literally a year from manuscript, manuscript delivery to actual finding the book on the shelves. So that was that kind of timeline, um, so. There we go. Let me see. I can't see a question. Um, um, so, yeah, I went, it, it may be different, different uh, in terms of the question on the sort of the commission. Um, you know, what you get as an, as an advance what kind of the standard, you know, percentages, um, you know, like a literary agent, if you're going that route, they obviously have the greatest interest to get you the best advance and the best deal with respect to your commission. I'll be honest with you, you don't write a book to make money, which I know sounds so funny, if you're really thinking, oh, I'm gonna, you know, it's about making the money, then you might say, you know what? 
I'm going to go a self publishing or a hybrid publisher route um, because I want the book to be my source of in like the book itself, the source of income. Um, I don't think it's until you're sort of multiple best selling books later that you're actually making money from the sale of the book, or you're so fortunate that your book is selling, you know, millions of copies. So that goes really back to the beginning again of like your ego and what's in it and what's the reason for the book is the book, the basis of a future business is the book, the basis of the business that you're in now. Um, and yeah, I hope that answers that question. Um, um, you know, with respect to like, I would say if you're going to go the traditional publishing route, you know, get yourself a, um, a, a good literary agent who again is going to negotiate uh, on your behalf to get you the best possible deal with my literary agent. I mean, things that they were looking at was, um, you know, only the sale of the English language rights um, to the publisher so that they, they, they could resell foreign language rights. Um, and so that they weren't selling all the rights to my book. Um, whether or not they were selling the rights to the audiobook to the same publisher or selling it to somebody else, um, whether there was any carve outs for countries so that they could um, create different book deals. So for example, one author friend of mine, her book is being published by interesting Penguin Random House Canada. It hasn't been published, it has not been purchased by Penguin Random House US yet. Uh, so there's all sorts of things like that. And this is where, you know, getting a literary agent that you can work with, who can really help you with that. Um, I know I've said a couple of times, self-publishing, hybrid publisher, or traditional publisher. Self-publishing is exactly what it sounds like. Like you're finding a platform that you're uploading your manuscript and you're publishing it. Um, and maybe it's self-publishing so that it's for sale on Amazon, um, or other, you know, maybe it's just for an ebook. I know there was one of the resources I gave was just for ebooks. Uh, a hybrid hybrid publisher usually has kind of um, what it sounds like a hybrid. It might be a purely kind of self serve, um, self publishing part, or they may have uh, an element of hand holding uh, with an author to help with the marketing, the publicity, kind of giving some of the services that a traditional publisher would do for an author, or maybe a little bit more than they would do because hybrid publishers are usually smaller, a little more bespoke, a little more hands-on. Um, and depending on what you would make would depend on what you negotiate uh, or what they offer authors. So um, some of this too is, you know, thinking about, um, what route is right for you and your reason for publishing the book? I'll be honest, if I hadn't gotten a publisher, would I have like pursued publishing a book? I don't know. I don't know, knowing what I know now with all the work that's been on it, I don't know. Maybe I was just sure I was gonna get a publisher or maybe I didn't even wanna think about the horror of not getting one, but um, it's a lot of work, uh, so. I don't know. I don't know. I, thankfully, I don't have to think it. Think about it that way. Um, five. Okay, so I'm writing five nonfiction books of spirituality. Uh, original translation for uh, working on a second. Should I just exert the book or to give it give away? I'm doing a bunch of other marketing writing, which is going to take away from my research. Um, you know what? Yeah, this is. Um, these are really great. Really, really, really. Um, great questions this you know this is where um marty this is where you could you could you could have a you know for people to download a sample chapter um this is where you could have um like you could do this you know if you want to do this as marketing download a sample chapter um, off of your website require people to give you their email address to get the sample chapter uh, and then you're creating your email marketing list for marketing a book. Um, 
and yes, there there is a lot of to go on when you're writing and marketing, but this is where, um, unfortunately, you, you kind of got to do all these things. Um, my recommendation on the marketing is, you know, think about, you know, think about where you already have strong audiences and strong supporters of people who can champion your book and think about if you're going to spend your energy, you know, spend it where you need to build new audiences before you're just trying to pitch them to buy your book. Um, you know, you know, people who have known and loved you for, you know, all the years of your, you know, career to date, you know, they're going to take your call. So where to maybe if you're going to, as you're writing and having to create new audiences, um, you know, think about spending your non-writing time with those new audiences. Um, in terms of things like your social media, if you know what you need to say and you've got kind of a history there, you know, sites like Upwork um, or Fiverr are really great places to find um, talented um, folks in the, you know, digital marketing space uh, at a price point that's not too hideous, um, who can work and, you know, kind of maintain your social accounts when you're not managing them. Um, and continue to put out content that is reflective of your voice um, and your thought leadership. So, um, so um, you got to set. You have to set up. You got to take care of your marketing, um, particularly with with nonfiction books. Um, um, if you're looking to get a book deal with a publisher, you have to show them you can market a book. There's there's just no way around it. Um, you know, you can think you've got the greatest idea. Um, and, and I know you say, hey, I think the second one's gonna be a bestseller. Uh, I have someone that I know who got quite an extraordinary advance for her book on the basis of two other books. I think one had been maybe published by Harvard Business Review. And I forget who the other one was published by, but not, they weren't published by um, the, the um, they weren't published by the kind of the biggest publisher, but they were reputable publishers. So she got a massive advance from, um, I think it was Penguin Random House for her last book. Um, everyone was, you know, telling her, oh, it's going to be a bestseller. And it wasn't. Um, and that was uh, a bit of a shattering experience. Um, so my best advice is like, you know, go in there working your butt off to make it a, a bestseller. But you know what? Life happens. I mean, the number of authors I know who had in-person book tours planned for starting in March 2020, and all of a sudden they had to rethink things. You know, you got to be resilient. You got to be resourceful. You got to be imaginative. Um, and you, you know, could I quote Nike? You just got to do it. Um, really comes to mind. Um, and there's really, there's no guarantees. I mean, there are, there's, I think there are services you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on to get them to, you know, make your book a New York Times bestseller. But, you know, not all of us have hundreds of thousands of dollars to make our book a New York Times bestseller. Uh, so, uh, you know, I want to say you can buy yourself a bestseller by literally buying hundreds of thousands of copies of your own book, or, you know, you got to market the heck out of it um, and find imaginative ways to do it and keep doing that. Um, and, you know, you never know what's going to be, you know, an immediate hit, what's going to be a sleeper hit and what stuff, just because life happens, um, you know, the timing is off. So um, there we go. Um, um, oh, yay, Sonia, tell us about, um, tell us about your book, uh, and, um, when it was published, um, awesome stuff. All right, we're just after three o'clock. I know this was supposed to go for an hour, um, so if there's, you know, Sonia, I want you to share in the chat your book and, um, when it came out. 
And otherwise, if there's you know any final questions, pop them in the chat now. So many of you have stayed this full hour and a bit, and I am deeply appreciative to you and, and to A Small World uh, for um, the opportunity to share my experience with publishing. If you don't have more questions, um, Feel, feel free to reach out to me through my website, through social media, through a small, weird, a small world. Um, and, uh, you know, happy to see where I can answer questions. Uh, and uh, Joy, thank you. Um, I think this was a great session too. And not because I'm the presenter and I'm saying that. I'm saying that because of all of you sharing your experiences and really using the chat really made this meaningful uh you know I, I can't see your faces so the fact that you all really engaged and participated and were so generous in the chat has made it uh really a special webinar uh so thank you a small world community it's just been a pleasure to be with you this afternoon and i'm glad this was a lot of useful information i'm you know Got to have that practical and actionable kind of advice um, to, to, to help folks out. So I'm, um, uh, oh, your book came out in 2009. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, Sonia. Um, so um, great. I'm glad this was insightful. I'm glad this was helpful. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you all today. So thanks so much. Um, and as I said, you know where to find me, connect and um, uh, all the rest of it. So oh, this, the helpful part in terms of not necessarily making money, the marketing was that, yes, many thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, no point in sugarcoating this publishing stuff. It can look sure look glamorous on the outside. Um, all right, thanks everyone. Have a great uh, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Stay well, stay healthy, um, and uh, hopefully see you again or chat with you again or webinar with you again uh, in the future.